Be down, guys, welcoming you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. Today's video, I wanted to share about Puja. Uh, for those who are not aware, uh, or if you are, very soon next week, in the, I believe, 22nd, 23rd, I'll put more information in the description below. Um, Swamiji is uh, offering a free initiation into Shiva Diksha and Vishesha Diksha, where uh, we get to receive, I'll give you a glimpse, the Atmalinga. And the Atmalinga is a very special and unique happening. So it is a 24 carat. carved crystal and uh, it is a linga obviously and atma atma means the soul linga means uh means the is the shiva linga so it is the linga of your soul it is basically your atma your soul with you and um and i wanted to share my experience of puja so when we get initiated um we should practice and perform puja to the atma linga every day as per the Agama, it's a short puja we do in the morning. And I wanted to share my experience of puja and how, um, I mean, at least part of my experience of puja and how it has helped me and how uh, it is such a powerful happening. Um, puja is basically worship, right? And initially I felt, at least when I jumped into the whole thing, you know, people had these ideas of rituals and worshipping and people doing things without any context and they just do for the sake of doing like robots. And so there was this kind of negative connotation towards doing a puja or ritual. But then I realized that, uh, of course, that is not the right context for doing puja. You need to be aware and do conscious declarations and, and everything when you do a puja. But the puja is very powerful when you do it from the right context. Um, as a matter of fact, it might be one of the most powerful ways of awakening the conscious energy um, and invoking uh, cosmic energy inside your body and, and giving yourself breakthrough uh, in terms of the cognitions you have about yourself, about life, and the intensity of energy and kundalini that flows in your system. And Puja is really like, it. actually it is like the most intimate time to be with Paramashiva. It's a time where it's only you and him and Guru, because Paramashiva comes in the life of a sincere devotee, a seeker in the form of Guru. So it is a time where you sit with Guru, with Paramashiva, and, um, and you simply connect and offer your gratitude and think about and cherish um, sweet a sweetness in general, I would not even say sweet memories, it's just a sweetness, an intimacy, a deep, fulfilling intimacy with the divine. And, and that is very important. Um, it is very important to keep us connected to the higher sources, or I should say the higher source of life, which is super consciousness. Um, we get caught, we tend to get caught a lot in the smallness of life in various situations, and we generate various emotions in our inner space according to that. Um, and puja helps you to snap out of this kind of nonsense, kind of, um, yeah, I would say, immature conversation with life. It allows you to snap out of this immature conversation with life. And it reminds you that you are the super consciousness, that the reality is a projection of your, uh, of what you carry in your inner space. So like that, you constantly remind yourself that you are responsible for everything that happens inside and outside. It keeps the seeking alive. It keeps the prayerfulness uh, alive. And it allows you to experience oneness because in the Hindu tradition, Swamiji was sharing in one satsang that devotees, they feel that Vedantis, the people who, who, have, who go towards the understanding of Paramashivoham, are dry. And the people who are Vedantis, which do not like to engage with this idea of serving the divine or having devotion towards the divine because they feel it is duality, they feel that, um, that devotees or bhaktas are deluded. Uh, but uh, Swamiji was nicely sharing that actually uh, both is wrong. Both are deluded because end of the day, Advaita is oneness. And both happen simultaneously, the devotion 
and the the experience of Paramashivam happens simultaneously. And that is why when we do puja, we have a very powerful mantra or in the declaration we give at the beginning, um, which is Sohamasmi. Sohamasmi means even when I worship, I am Him. So we need to break the duality that we perceive uh, that it's like, oh, if I relate to you, then you must be higher than me, then I'm lower than you. And all this logic that we operate from has to be broken and we have to reach a space which is beyond that. And that is a glimpse of the space of oneness and it's very powerful and it's very sweet and obviously very blissful. And puja helps you to do that. Puja helps you to, to reconnect with who you are, with yourself, with um, your essence, with your purpose, with, yeah, for me, I would really say it's a, it's a very intimate moment and it's very fulfilling. That kind of intimacy cannot be experienced with human beings unless uh, it cannot be experienced with human beings. Um, it is only something that can be experienced between the guru and the disciple and the, and the devotee and Paramashiva, which is one and the same. Guru, disciple, devotee and Paramashiva is the same thing. So, um, so it's very powerful. Um, I have seen in my life that every time I decide to sit for puja, a lot of healing happens in the way that you kind of settle down back to your source, yourself. Yourself is always powerful, but we lose track of it. When we do puja, we start to reconnect with it. That is why it's called the Atmalinga, your soul, yourself. You have to reconnect with that so you can establish yourself in the space of powerfulness. So it's a very wonderful thing. And you do that at the beginning of the day, not to mention, and normally you're supposed to do it at Brahma Murta. Brahma Murta, which is the time between 4.30 a.m. to 6 a.m., where most of the morning routine happens. And why it is time? Because it is a time where lower frequencies thrive in the body. So if during that period of time you are awake, then you will not unconsciously support your patterns, which are your vasanas, your patterns, which are thriving at that moment. And not only that, if you're awake and you're doing a conscious decision to align yourself to the space of Paramashivam, which is doing puja or Nityanda yoga, that is ultimate. So not only you're awake, you don't cherish unconsciously, but you consciously override these patterns, these frequencies with a conscious declaration, a conscious decision to raise yourself and establish yourself in the space of Paramashivam, to be powerful always, no matter what. And uh, yes, if you wonder what powerful means, I have... Um, at least a kind of an explanation that I can that I shared in the yesterday's video so inviting you to check out yesterday's video as well and uh, and yeah so constantly being established in that powerfulness um, also actually I'm going to finish the video here um, but I wanted to share I'm I'm going to release maybe today or tomorrow another video I made a voiceover of the Guru Gita so Amaji told us to read the Guru Gita I felt that you know some people might not read and I felt it's not that long, but it's worth it. So I, I recorded it and I'm going to uh, publish a video about it. So inviting you to check it out. And in the Guru Gita, so much understanding happens about the importance of devotion, surrendering, service. See, the service you do to the Guru, which leads to liberation, which is the ultimate path to liberation, service to the Guru. When you become fulfilled, when it fulfills you, when you experience Paramashivam, it turns into service to humanity. So, but initially when we are stuck in the identity, we need to break that by serving the Guru. By serving the Guru, we break free from the identity, we become one with the Guru, and then that service turns towards serving humanity, serving the other reflections of superconsciousness, which is all of us. So, um, it's very beautiful, powerful. It also clearly shares of how, you know, abuse, they collapse, and the importance of Guru, and how Guru is the ultimate knowledge. Um, is the ultimate scriptures, the ultimate path. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So looking forward, I'm editing it right now. So it'll be out shortly. Um, so keep posted uh, today or tomorrow. So with this, again, uh, very thankful for your support, watching the videos on a daily basis. I upload every day, inviting you to subscribe and like the videos if that's not already done. And if you have a comment, if you have, yes, do this in the comments. Why uh, share a powerful cognition about your experience of puja? If you have performed puja, share a powerful cognition or an experience you had about that in the comments below. And then, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see uh, one thing that uh, each 
one of you have experienced while doing puja, if you have ever done puja. So I'll put the in information for the initiation as well st that is happening next week, I believe. And uh, think about it because it's very powerful. And it's basically uh, initiation into the path of experiencing oneness with Paramashiva and realizing that you are Paramashiva. So with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much again. Nityananda. Be blissful. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda.